we need to look at an example that uses cube roots. So what we need to notice is that there is a number here. And be very cautious, especially when you write and also when you're looking at problems, about the number that we have here. It's definitely not a 3 out front. It's not like any number out front that we've had before. It needs to be right in the little hook in the crook there. This 3, that's the index. And it indicates what type of radical we have. Now, so far, we have not been using an index. The types of radical symbols we've used with no index, we assume that it's a 2. So what we've been working with so far are radicals where the index is 2. And that means, if we're saying square root of 9, we know that it's 3 because 3 to the second power equals 9. So that index, in a way, is saying, well, what should the exponent be of the number that's going to end up for my answer? So square root of 9 is 3 because that answer with an exponent of 2 would equal our radicand 9. So we're just going back and forth, exponent, square root, square root, exponent. They, they undo each other. This square root with an exponent of 2 undo each other. What we have here is a 3. So if we're talking about a cube root, let's use 8 for our example. Cube root of 8 would be 2 because it's 2 to the third power that equals 8. 2 times 2 times 2. And how about another quick one? Cube root of 64 is an interesting one. We know about the square root of 64, that 8 times 8 is 64. With cube root, they're usually a, a tiny bit trickier to see or, or memorize, or, or they can at times be, I don't know, just confusing. So with 64, it's actually 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and then that 16 times 4 equals 64. Now, how we had a way of looking at prime factors, and if we found it in a pair, we would bring it out of a square root, We've got a nice, a similar approach for cube root. We'll look for prime factors, but if we see it in a set of three, we can bring it out of a radical, because that's our way of simplifying a cube root. It needs to be something to the third power, so we would need to see three of them inside the radical. Okay, 48. Let's make that tree. I'll take the opportunity to mention that the most helpful thing you can learn at this point, that's, that is definitely an exaggeration. But one very helpful thing is about 48, that's 3 times 16. That just that neat number seems to always pop up in this section, working with radicals. So try to remember 3 times 16 is 48. And most people, at least ones that I know, we didn't learn that one in the multiplication tables when you first started. But it's definitely a useful one. Okay, and I'm choosing to just go for all prime factors again. So four twos and one three. And don't forget about three times sixteen forty-eight. I get to the variables, and I'll still write th things in expanded form, but I can maybe see it without writing it all expanded. Just remember, with a cube root, now I'm thinking about how many sets of three will I find? How many sets of three? I'll go ahead and write expanded x times x. We have three y's and four z's. Okay, I'll take another opportunity. Always be cautious about what is really under the radical and what's not. And if you find yourself making this bar too short, I would recommend that you train yourself to make a little hitch right at the end because it's a shame to go off path on a problem just because your bar has gotten too short and some things fell out of the radical. So make sure that everything stays where it ought to be. So I'm ready to find these sets of three, three twos, and it's similar with square roots. And if I see three twos, I'm only bringing out one. That's similar to a cube root of eight. I know that eight is two times two times two. So I see three of them in a cube root. I can bring out one for the answer. So one, two, 2 and 3, not parts of a triplet, so those have to stay. The x is 2 of them, but we need 3, so those are going to stay. We have a triplet of y's, so we'll bring out one y. And z's, we have three z's with one left over. I'll put an arrow, so just so I don't forget about that guy. It's common when you have everything expanded to have the stragglers, maybe you forget about them. So just make sure that you don't do that. 
the factors that are left inside the cube root will need to be in the cube root for our answer. So I'll start to clean things up here. Out in front we have 2 times y times z. Open up the cube root where we need to have a 2 times 3, so our coefficient is 6. We have x times x is x squared. And the 1z, there's our simplified cube root.